repairing a two inch scale Fowler traction engine part four, making a special fitting to mount a commercially manufactured injector water valve to the bunker tank. The union nut fittings on this commercial water valve are 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. What I'm about to do using my Boxford lathe is modify one of the union nuts to accept a special union cone which is a quarter of an inch in diameter. I will make that shortly but the first thing to do is to drill out the 5 16 by 32 nut to quarter of an inch. The fitting that I need to make needs to be quite strong so I'm not using brass. I found this piece of metal in my scrap box and I think it's Allen bronze. That's why it's not turning too brilliantly with the cutting tool which isn't all that sharp. But it's not a massive issue as most of this will be invisible when the valve is fitted to the bunker tank. After turning down the end to quarter of an inch in diameter it's time to thread it. I'd just like to mention something. I am not using a tailstock die holder for this job. Instead I'm using an ordinary die holder and I'm keeping it square to the work by using the tailstock chuck. I'm not applying any pressure with the chuck, I just keep the chuck very close to the die holder to make sure that it's concentric, and it is. I have various die holders pre-fitted with dies that I need to use for various jobs, all the common ones. You can see in this clip that the die has cut the thread very well indeed. It's not torn at all, and it's very well defined. All I need to do now is turn down the other end to fit inside the 5 16 by 32 threads per inch union nut. Once I'd finished turning this part to suit the union nut, it was time to drill the hole down the centre. A quick word about drilling fittings. I would like the hole in the middle to be 3.1 millimetres or 1 8 of an inch in diameter. It's not a good idea to drill the hole too big because this would make the fitting weak. Once I'd finished turning this part of the component to the correct diameter, I parted it off, but not using a parting tool. Instead, I used the cutting tool that I was already using for the rest of the turning operation. And the reason for this is, if you look at the angle of the rear part of the carbide tip, it's about 30 degrees. So if I part off the component very carefully using this, I will end up with a union cone with exactly the right taper on it. Once I got really close to the part where the component falls into the chip tray, I inserted my drill again. My logic for doing it this way was, I thought that if I just drilled down the middle, the part would end up on the drill, but it didn't. Instead, as the cutting tool broke through, it jumped off and sat on top of the cutting tool, which was very convenient. You can clearly see that the angle of the cone is about right. This was also convenient because I didn't have to rummage about in the chip tray to pick it up. And that's about it for the turning operations in this episode. Now it's time to fit the part. I fitted my special adapter to the water valve and started to screw it in place into the flange on the bunker tank. And everything was going well but it didn't feel good. It was a little bit tight. And when I checked the thread on the small insert that was in there originally, it was a bit of a nondescript thread. At some stage it had been radically over tightened so the thread form was damaged. I need to use a tap just to clean out the thread in the flange on the bunker tank. But unfortunately I cannot engage a tap wrench because of its position. But thankfully I am not entirely stupid so I came up with an idea. And here is the idea. Necessity is the mother of invention. Using a small hammer and a similar sized tap, I made this very useful tool. Here it is. It's just a piece of copper tube, hammered square at one end. Oh yes, and I nearly forgot, it's bent over at the other end. Because I'm only cleaning this thread, I don't need to put a lot of pressure on the tap. And this was perfect for the job. Very easy, the tap sailed through the hole, and the threads were clean. Once again I will repeat my warning, if you're working on miniature engines, whether the traction engines, steam locomotives or stationary engines, do not, and I repeat, do not over tighten the components. These are not car engine cylinder head bolts, and they're usually made of a very soft or brittle material, usually brass, and that just shears off, as do the small steel bolts, and that can be a major problem. So that the union nut clears the end of the Allen bolts, I fitted a couple of copper washers and used quite a lot of Loctite 542 on the thread. 
so I don't think this is going to leak because it's only water at atmospheric pressure. The important point about doing a job this way is that I'm using a commercially available product, so if this breaks or wears out, you can just change it for another valve, without all the messing about that I've had to do. I will have to repipe the condenser because all the pipes are at the wrong angle, and I will also have to fit a new handle. Here it is, and it's made from stainless steel so it's not going to rust. I will show how I fit the handle in a future episode. I coated the inspection hatch using some sealant, and I must stress that I did not use silicone sealant. I retightened all of the nuts. This squeezed out some of the sealant, which was wiped away using a cloth. I'll be repainting this entire area black in a future episode. To conclude this episode, I thought it would be a good idea to show a clip of the engine working. Stay safe and healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.